Hi everyone, thanks for watching my videos. I want to talk about long term care facilities and infection. Okay, you have your dad, your granddad, grandma, your mom, uncle, or auntie, or even yourself. Maybe you are already contemplating on using long term care. I mean your long-term care facility or for one reason or the other you have reason to visit someone there well let's go let's sit down together and go over this presentation okay infections in long-term care will not present in the typical way in other words the people taking care of long-term care facilities occupants should not be expecting the classical signs and symptoms of infection so they should know that the presentation will be atypical because most of the times we'll be dealing with elderly and elderly and if an infection will present in a typical way most of the time so if you use your thermometer looking for high or low temperature you may be disappointed the temperature may not be typical okay but you are likely going to see them in certain forms they could become confused they could be having delirium they could become agitated the appetite may be down, may not be eating properly again. When you check them for the urine, they could have foul smelling urine. They may be vomiting. When you take the vital signs, you may have bradycardia or tachycardia. They can be very weak and sleepy. They will likely have reduced physical activities. And when they are down with infection, instead of coming out to join their groups to do group activities, they prefer to sleep indoor. The BP could be at the down hand, hypertension, and the O2 side will be very low, decreased oxygen saturation. They can come down with pneumonia. The mortality due to pneumonia is very high, particularly in long-term facilities and the rest of the population. Pneumonia is worse in those with history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or people with heart failure. And those who had stroke in the past or those with decreased level of consciousness and muscular dystrophy will likely have more probability of coming down with pneumonia. The reason is aspiration is very common and the organism that will still cause pneumonia in them remains streptococcal pneumonia like we find in community acquired pneumonia. That's atypical and gramnetical bacilli are common. Multi drug resistant pathogens are very common. What I meant by less atypical is less atypical organisms like mycoplasma causing pneumonia in them. The risk factors for multi drug resistance ones are dementia, non ablatory status, anti exposure in the past six months, and decreased activities of daily living. The more they become less active, the more they use antibiotics all the time, the more they are less ambulatory, and the worse the dementia level, all these factors will lead to increased possibility of multi-drug resistance. And of course, 
the another factor that is not stated right here is the occurrence of organisms that have developed resistance to antibiotics around. So we've gone through ammonia, multidrug resistance factors, and now influenza. This is very common. Of course, it's everywhere, particularly in winter time, and very common uh, seasonal outbreaks, particularly the ones with comorbidity. They could have a typical presentation, just like the way I started. Hence, the recognition could be very late. And intervention could be also very late because they will not present in typical way. The best thing to do is to vaccinate all residents and of course all members of staff. Someone is asking me, what's the business about vaccinating members of staff? It's good for the staff and it's going to be good for the residents. By the time all residents and all members of staff well, you know, have been given the shot, then everyone is fine, right? But if members of staff would not be vaccinated, they walk, leave, go out, come back, and they acquire the infection and they bring it in. Or even if a resident is sick with the uh, flu and the staff is not vaccinated and they contract it, they will be very sick. So it's good for everybody. Tuberculosis. This is not common in many parts of advanced world, but it's still not out of place to really talk about it. You may screen for latent tuberculosis infection. And if that is possible, then you give INH as very useful for treating latent TB. Um, if you are able to pick active TB, I pray you won't, then you have to isolate the affected person and treat properly. Not long from now, I'll be publishing full info on pulmonary tuberculosis and even non-pulmonary tuberculosis as well. Urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. This is very common. As a matter of fact, it's a very common source of infection. I think it should be the next to pneumonia. It is more in those on indwelling catheter. Now, someone needs bladder you know, draining and is on indwelling catheter for a long period of time. It's very common with Elderly diagnosed with BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Some call it benign prostatic hypertrophy. Also common among women with atrophic vaginitis, diabetes mellitus, those with neurogenic bladder, individuals with dementia, dehydration will increase the chances, and functional impairment. But the appropriate thing to do is those ones that we could correct immediately or prevent so easily, like catheterization, we should undo the catheterization appropriately. And we should limit the rate at which we use catheter. It should only be used when needed and while inserting the catheter, the procedure should be aseptic. And when the catheter is chosen to be used with the aseptic procedure. It should be there, I mean, for a short period of time. So, diarrhea. Diarrhea disease is common in long term facilities. It spreads very quickly and it spreads like person to person transmission mostly from contaminated food, sometimes from 
airborne transmission, like viral infection causing the area. Bacteria that could be diagnosed there could be Clostridium DVC. And that is in the past, the new name is Clostridioides DVC, is the new name now. Could be Escherichia coli, Shigella, Yersinia, Giardia, or Cryptosporidium. So bacteria is pretty common. Now you know all you know, signs, weakness, tiredness, decreased blood pressure. We need to hydrate quickly and undo you know, whatever the constitutive agent is. Pressure ulcers. I have made a very uh, detailed presentation on pressure ulcers. You can please check my channel for that particular presentation. Um, pressure ulcers are very common and could be complicated by osteomyelitis. But I will not waste your time going into details of that because I have made a separate presentation already and is published. Just check my channel. Scabies and tinea. Scabies will present with itching, rashes, scaly lesions with mice, and the diagnosis is made by skin scrapings. Tinea, on the other hand, we have outbreak that is very common when in contact through clothing, lining, or washing areas. So, you know, appropriate things to do, permetrine, cleaning, and of course, proper hygiene will prevent. Conjunctivitis, red eyes, cherry, and so on could be caused by Streptococcus aureus or adenovirus. It's the group A Streptococcus infection causing this could be transmitted from person to person. So appropriate uh, irrigation and ocular antibiotics, but don't limit that to what you do. Let the physician in charge be quickly in involved and you can involve ophthalmologists, as the case may be. Sexually transmitted infections and some drug resistance antibiotics. Well, someone is asking, is that going to be possible? Sexually transmitted infection in long-term care facilities? We are humans. And even somebody that's just been admitted could have come into the, you know, to the fold with the infection before being admitted. So it may be present, but it's not as pronounced as if you are dealing with people of ages 20 and 40, no. So we can, when you find one, please treat appropriately and prevent the spread. Meticillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is very common and in almost 50% of group O drug resistant cases. Vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus could be variable, but about 45% of people that are admitted could come with this. That's what is called drug resistant gram negative organisms. Some call it multidrug resistant than negative due to prior antibiotic use. And they could be resistant to gabapenem, and that is gabapenem resistant heterobacterias. It could be Klebsiella pneumonia gabapenemis. Klebsiella pneumonia gabapenemis producing enterobacteries are gram negative organisms that are resistant to carbapenem antibiotics. So we can be dealing with a lot of drug resistance cases you know, in long-term care facilities. So the history of antibiotic usage in the past is very, very important. And we must you know, 
handled appropriately because not only because they will not present typically and now that we are battling with drug resistance we need to get down to the diagnosis that this is glucomycin resistance or methicillin resistance or multi-drug resistance as the case might be and quickly change you know, to another antibiotic but even if you want to be sure that your antibody is working or not, you can just hazard the level of procalcitonin. Procalcitonin level will give you a clue if you are winning or not when you are dealing with bacteria-related infection. And you can get details as per procalcitonin on my channel. I've made a separate presentation on procalcitonin. Please check my channel for that. In conclusion, long-term care facilities with long-term infections will require long-term prevention, long-term observation, and of course, long-term support. Therefore, all long-term care facilities will need enough members of staff. There must be prompt intervention at the slightest suspicion of infection. Remember, the elderly that we may be dealing with might not present in the typical way. And that is why some will actually die and the diagnosis will only be made as autopsy or post-mortem, depending on where you are on the surface of the earth. Even the die of silent ischemic attack, then the die of silent heart attack. So these elderly people will not present in the typical way. Kindly you know, keep an eye on them. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Um, we are all going to live and reach this stage that we might be in long-term care facilities later in life if we have the privilege to live long. So if you want someone to treat you well that time, treat them well today. Thanks for listening. Can you subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they're published. Thanks, I appreciate it.